Hello again, YouTube. Today we're going to be covering a little bit of Halls of Torment again. So this is an experimental update that came out uh, yesterday. And uh, looks like it's a pretty good update so far. So next major update is drawing near. But right now they're just doing a bunch of localization. So they're starting off with that. So we've got some translations for different languages. But gameplay-wise... Electrify has now been renamed to be Spark and some other stuff. Quest Tracker shows required character. Gem Clusters. So gem clusters are your experience, are now based on their XP value and change color. So 5,000 or more is translucent. Selecting any inventory slot in the stash menu will now filter the items in the stash. That's pretty nice. So, some new variants here. Sparking tips for lightning and in Invocator's Grasp or Elites. Uh, Frost Thorns includes two variants, so new item. Thunder Charge Gauntlets includes three variants, and Bloodstained Wrappings includes two variants. I have not seen these items quite yet, but uh, as soon as I do, I'll try to show them off. So some new quests that unlock those new items and some balancing. This is the real part I want to talk about. So we got Hunting Gloves has gone to 30% multi-strike. Uh, I really like multi-strike in the game and I find it quite fun to play with. Um, so I'm, I'm good with that change. It would be nice to see maybe some, some trade-offs between multi-strike and attack speed. As it is, you can get both and they stack quite heavily. But uh, this is one of those trade-offs because... The glove slot has a really good attack speed glove. So having that multi-strike glove does give some trade-off, which I like. Uh, Invocator's Grasp, they've changed it so it is 30% spawns and only, and uh, not only, and now up to 50% damage, way higher than before, but uh, no longer gives force to summons or to the character. So... Swarm has extra spawns. Elites has extra base damage. Base damage is a big focus, it seems like, in this update. I've just skimmed it so far, but we've got some other base damage going on. So Unholy Touch has gone from 50% Affliction to 20% Fragile. So Affliction increases damage dealt, and Fragile increases status damage, like Spark. Pretty sure I got that in the right order. So, nerfing some fragile here from 100% to 40%. So, 100% affliction, 20% slow. There's a lot of different variant changes here. All variants now scale with their respective effect chances. So, if they weren't scaling before, that means that's a pretty big buff. Uh, so, 100% fragile, not scaling to 40%, does scale. Should probably end up being similar. Sparking tips, 100% chance to 10% chance as a burn chance bonus and 20% base burn chance. 20% base burn chance. So we're going to go a little bit more Ooh, elemental effect damage bonus on the fire version of this. So this is the growth version of the attack speed gloves. They've been nerfed. The pickup range gloves have been buffed. And of course their variant has been buffed. So I do believe pickup range was itself buffed recently. Uh, so this is this is a nice little uh, little buff too. So that, that would be useful for anything that scales with pickup range. Like the um, blazing shell armor, I think it is. Which uh, scales with pickup range and uh, lights enemies on fire uh, doing the, the burn effect. Spellcaster Gloves now goes to 100%. Delay is reduced and increased speed of charging up. Those are huge changes. So these come into effect way quicker. You're actually maybe able to toggle them on and off a little bit by not attacking. So this is the gloves that if you don't attack, you use your main hand weapon, you slowly build up to 66% bonus damage. So it's going to scale up faster to 100%. Basically twice as strong uh, between the different uh, uh, changes here. Three buffs. 
Uh, Piercing Wind trait. So this is like a trait or a talent that you leveled up. Has been buffed. That is interesting. Uh, this is my favorite change of the patch right here. Let me highlight it. Iron Ring from 10 base damage to 15. And then all of its variants, of course, have been buffed in similar fashion. That's a 50% buff to the ring. And I was personally already running the Iron Ring quite often. Now the Iron Ring doesn't look that strong by itself. And it maybe wasn't as strong as it was intended to be um, since they're buffing it. So one of the things that the Iron Ring is really useful for is a lot of abilities do really, really low damage, such as the, uh, the Needle Spray ability, which I think only does something like 40 damage or 30 damage. You've got a bunch of... Um, Smaller damage like summons, uh, like the Warlock's attack or the Flamethrower attack on on the the Pyro kind of character. I don't remember what his name is. Um, does only something like 40 or 50 damage per attack. And so 10 bonus damage is... And of course that's going to scale with all your percentage damage bonuses. 10 bonus damage to 50 or 40 da base damage is, is quite large. And then because it scales with all your percentage damages... It's, it gets seriously large. So this going to 15, that's a 50% increase on the Iron Ring. It is something I always loved running. I didn't always run it because sometimes I would go crit builds and stuff. Um, or the uh, Wind Ring where you get attack speed when you're standing still and stuff like that. But uh, if you can pull something like the boost or the growth in a run... You're looking at a lot of abilities having double base damage. A lot of the weaker abilities doing double base damage, and that's huge. So, yeah, a lot of your projectiles, specifically. Um, My last run was the Shield Maiden, and I did discover that it did not work on her Shield Bash effect. But it works on her main attack, and it works on all the normal abilities. So there are exceptions to this uh, bonus damage. Anyway. Moving on. Yes, I really like the Iron Ring, but moving on. Uh, plated Boots uh, changed percentage values to base values. I really like this as well. Um, a lot of characters didn't have high base values to begin with, so having percentage defense wasn't very good. So this brings all characters up kind of into a midline, normalizing them a bit. So Plated Boots give 10 defense and 10 block strength uh, instead of like 20% defense and 20% block strength. Uh, and then, of course, the variants are the you know, same thing here. They've reduced the movement speed of the runner's shoes. Um, they did increase base movement speed, if I recall, last balance patch. So that's probably just them trying to kind of offset that a little bit. Um, plate armor block strength has gone to 10. And health, they're still doing percentage health bonuses. Uh, health has gone to 25%. So... Again, I, I like these changes. They're they're pretty strong. Um, because this means that any character that really wants to run some defense can. Um, the characters that already run high amounts of defense, like the Shield Maiden, uh, can quite literally get to the point where they just basically take no damage and can stand still. But the characters that don't have that ability um, can cannot do that. And, uh, and can... So because this is a percentage shift it means it's going to probably weaken the Shield Maiden from standing still, uh, but buff a lot of other characters to be able to do a little bit more. So this is probably a nerf to some of the tankier characters and a, and a buff to the less tanky characters. Uh, same thing here. The variant here. Um, Chainmail, base defense, same thing. Uh, increased max health. And then a bunch of bug fixes. I'm not going to go into the bug fixes here, uh, but uh, looks like they forgot to give crit chance to some abilities when they changed crit chance in the last patch. So nothing has 0% crit chance or was not supposed to have 0% crit chance. So that's a bug now. Uh, so buffing and changing some some different things there. Like. And changing you know, bug fix with the English achievements on Steam. So relatively simple update um some so three new items some changes to some names and and location uh, localizations and i really like this change it's it's pretty simple but should help you know show how much is actually sitting on the ground 
And I'll have to try out these new these new items and uh, see how they, they feel, especially these spellcaster gloves. That's going to be huge. I don't know. I don't know who you'd run the spellcaster gloves on specifically. Um, I usually ran them on the warlock or, or something similar to that. You wouldn't want to run them on the sage since you'd be losing out on your main weapon. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, again, this game is very, very high bang for your buck. Uh, it is not a $70 AAA game. It is, however, overwhelmingly positive. It is early access, hopefully soon to hit level uh, or um, patch 1.0, and it is only $5 USD. And I have personally spent over 100 hours in this game. I really like it. It's pretty simple. Vampire Survivors kind of style meets Diablo 2 kind of aesthetic. So if you haven't gone out and bought it, then check it out. Anyway, that's all for now, and uh, have a great day, and enjoy your gaming time.